Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. In this episode, I want to make a kind of a continuation off the previous episode where I talked about how much you need to spend to get into good vinyl playback. And what I said in that previous episode was that you need to budget at least $300 for an acceptable turntable setup. And you need to budget at least $1,000 to get into something that's good that you can start comparing to digital. And when I talk about a turntable setup, I'm talking about the turntable itself, the tone arm, and the cartridge. So those three things. The response to that video was really good and it generated a lot of discussions right within the video comments section itself and in forums such as on Facebook and elsewhere. And people mostly agreed with me. Of course, some people didn't, but for the most part, people did. But those in the know made a criticism, and I think it's valid that I didn't stress one more part of the turntable playback chain, and that is the phono stage. What is a phono stage? It's a necessary part of a turntable based playback system signal chain that has two main functions, to boost the signal from the cartridge and to equalize the signal. And when I say the signal has to be boosted, it has to be boosted by a lot. If you've ever taken the outputs of a turntable without a phono stage in between and plug them into the inputs of a integrated amplifier or a standalone preamplifier, and I mean the regular line level inputs, you'll realize you hardly get any sound out. It's because the output of that cartridge is just too low. The signal from it needs to come up in level. And when we talk about that, we talk about it in terms of gain. So I talked to Diego Stan, our measurement specialist, about this topic again because he's measured many phono preamplifiers for us. Phono preamplifier or phono stage, you can call them the same thing. And he found that with moving magnet phono stages, that's for a moving magnet cartridge, one of the types you'll encounter, particularly on lower price turntables, they provide from 34 to 46 dB a gain. Now that might not seem like much to you or you might not even know what that means. But what it means is it's increasing the signal level from 50 to 200 times. That's a lot. Now moving coil sections for moving coil cartridges. They generally increase from 48 to 72 dB or about 250 to 4,000 times. That's a huge increase in signal level. You might be thinking, well, what's the problem? Just increase those signal levels. We do it all the time. Well, not so fast. It's hard to do well because what happens when you increase the signal level is that you stand a good chance of increasing the noise and distortion. And the more you increase the signal level, the more noise and distortion you're going to get. So this is why a phono stage can have a profound impact on the sound. It can introduce a lot of noise and distortion that you don't want. And what you really want from a good phono stage is to increase that signal level, but minimize the amount of noise and distortion that it adds. I also mentioned that the phono stage has to equalize the signal. Here's what that means. Essentially, it has to increase the bass frequencies and decrease the treble, and the amounts it increases or decreases is in accordance with what's called the RIAA curve, an industry standard. And why this is done is because when a record is made, in order that the stylus tracks the groove properly and you can extract all the musical information from it, they have to decrease the bass frequencies and increase the treble when it's cut. Likewise, then, on playback, to get the correct tonal balance, you have to boost the bass and decrease the treble. Otherwise, you'll have frequency response changes that aren't supposed to be there. There are other features that some phono stages have, such as settings to optimize its interface with the cartridge, and also maybe a rumble filter, which is used to cut out really low frequencies, which can occur when there are warped records, say, and they make your woofers go like that. But I want to keep this to the main things the phono stage is there for that can really affect the sound quality. And that is the gain the phono stage provides and its equalization. You don't get those things right, you're not going to optimize the sound. And remember this, you absolutely need the phono stage in your system to have the gain and equalization that you require. So where is it that the phono stage is in the system? Well, obviously after the turntable, and in fact, some turntables today have a phono stage built in. In fact, sometimes on lower price turntables, they've been added on. You'll find them with the phono stage. And I think the manufacturers do that because they know that somebody buying an inexpensive turntable, perhaps getting into vinyl, 
isn't maybe counting on adding a phono stage into their system or having one there already, so they add what's usually an inexpensive one on right there. More typically, Phono stages are built into integrated amplifiers and standalone preamplifiers. So if you turn one of them around and you see a phono input or two on the back, that is a phono stage. And they can have moving magnet and or moving coil built in. Not guaranteed to have both, could be one or the other. So you have to check that to just make sure it's going to match up with your cartridge. And then there are the standalone phono stages of which there are so many out there it's hard to know where to start. But I happen to have three on hand that I'll talk a little bit about just to give you an idea of what you might encounter. This is the Bellari VP549. It's a moving magnet only phono stage. This is the iFi Audio Zen Phono, which supports both moving magnet and moving coil cartridges. They both sell in the United States for under $200. This is another iFi Audio phono stage called the iPhono 3. This is the black label edition. It looks rather simple, but when you lift it up, you see all these dip switches underneath for cartridge adjustment and also gain. It's quite a sophisticated unit and it sells for about $1,000. We've written about all three of these phono stages. I actually wrote about the Bellari in my System 1 column on SoundstageHiFi.com in January 2021. James Hale wrote about the iFi Audio Zen Phono in his Art Plus Tech column on SoundstageExperience.com in July 2021. And Jason Thorpe wrote about the iPhono three black label edition on soundstage hi-fi again in may 2021 so if you want to know a lot of details on these products i encourage you to read those reviews they're very thorough and you'll also see measurements on each product and if you want to know which phono stage is exactly right for you and how much you need to spend on a phono stage i can't tell you that that's really going to depend on your system configuration and your budget but what is really important to know is yes the turntable matters a lot. The turntable itself, the tone arm and the cartridge, but so too does that phono stage. It's what brings the signal into your system. So you better make sure you have a good one. Thank you for watching.